What happens when you get ready to break up with a narcissist? Like at the end of a relationship, whenever it's winding down and you start to see the light of day, you start to realize, I need to get out of this relationship. Maybe you've got to the place where you get ready to file divorce. Maybe you've got to the place where you've said something to your partner of like, hey, this is over. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. I'm doing something that is ending the relationship. Did you ever have this happen where you got to this point and then things started to shift or change or feel even more difficult or more confusing? We're going to dive into a piece of that today so you can understand what happens at the end of a relationship with a narcissist. Some of the things that they'll go through, some of the things that they'll say, some of the things that they'll do to try to get you to stay or to try to get you to leave either way. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge that you can access at claritychallenge.net. It's a systematic, scripted-out process that we've had many people go through to be able to break free of the trauma bond, get out of the rumination, and ultimately take back control of their mindset because that's what's going to set you free more than anything else. Well, a lot of what we're going to talk about today about being at the end of the relationship, some of this is very close to me. Uh, a lot of what I talk about is, but this one in particular, because there's a lot of nuances here that I experienced, that I've seen in other people, but that were part of my life when my wife was getting to the place where she wanted to leave the relationship multiple times, not just one time. But when she started to realize that it was toxic, she'd want to leave and I wouldn't want her to leave. So what happens? So okay, I'm diving in. At the very end, a big part is it's going to get crazy hard at the very end. Now, you thought it was hard throughout this whole time, but then you get to the place where you're like, I need to go ahead and make a move. I need to actually break this relationship up. I need to divorce. I need to separate. I need to move out, whatever it might be. And this is where it's going to get difficult to another degree, to another level. Because there's a bit of a push and a pull that's happening that's going back and forth from you and from the toxic person where he's trying to get you to stay and then he's like, forget it, we can't do this, like I'm done with this. And then he's trying to get you to stay and then forget it, like I can't do this. And it goes back and forth, back and forth, so much so that you're not even sure what to do in that moment. And you get to the place where you think this person does want a relationship and then they don't want a relationship. And then they do want a relationship and then they don't want a relationship. And it's back and forth. And a lot of times when there's so much back and forth, you get to the place where you don't actually make a move at all, where you don't change anything. You just kind of stay put because you're like, I don't know if I should go. I don't know if I should stay. And, and being in that limbo land is a really hard place to be. It has this cognitive dissonance piece that's like, I don't know what to believe. Do I believe his words? Do I believe his actions? Do I make this decision? Do I make that decision? Which do I actually do? Before my wife actually got to the place where she left, there was multiple times that she was in the process of leaving. Like she would get in the car and go, or she would start to pack her things and then not. Back and forth, back and forth, because I was doing this entire push-pull aspect. Now, besides the push-pull, you have the aspect of narcissists just discarding you, of like, hey, I'm done with you, forget it, moving on, and they just move on. They just leave. They just walk out of your life, oftentimes ghosting you to the point where you're, you feel like you're crazy, of like, what's wrong with me? Why did they leave me? And sometimes this can be where you start chasing after them. Sometimes we'll talk about this in the aspect of a reverse discard, where a narcissist has actually trained you over a period of time to be used to them pushing you and you always coming back them pushing you and you always coming back. It trains you over a period of time. So when they do leave, you're always coming back. You're always chasing after them. Oftentimes they'll use that in the next relationship being like, yeah, look at my crazy ex. She still wants to be with me, still interacting with me, all those different pieces. Now, when the relationship gets put on the line and you tell the narcissist, hey, we're done. You've done this too many times. I can't deal with this. You've cheated. You've lied too many times. This isn't happening. What's going to happen then? A lot of times you'll see this aspect of coming out of like, I'm changing, I'm trying. Like, why would you do this to me now? Like, we've already talked about this. I've already said like this. I've already been honest with you about this. Like, there's nothing else. Like, what else, you know? And is all this aspect of all of a sudden saying like, hey, I'm trying. Did you ever have your narcissist say to you, I'm trying, but you never see any difference? You never see any change? Because a lot of times we see that is a person will keep saying, hey, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. There isn't a try. That's the hard part for people to understand. There is no try. There is only you either do it or you don't do it. It's not, well, I tried to do it. No, the fact is you either did it or you didn't do it. 
But narcissists love to use this word try because it makes you feel like they're actually working towards a goal. The problem is you start locking onto your mindset that that word means they're working towards a goal and you don't actually look for the proof of it. So when you don't have the proof of it, you start to just believe something that's not even there, that's not even existent. Now, oftentimes we'll talk about this in the aspect of called future faking, where the other person is actually faking the future. They're faking an outcome that's not even going to happen, that they don't even believe in, that they don't even care about. But it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change. I'm going to get better. I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to do all these different things. But it's just something out there that, that you're holding on to and that you're hoping is going to happen versus them actually doing it. You might see this piece come out of like, don't give up on me, uh, don't leave me, uh, you're my person, uh, don't abandon me. All these different pieces will slowly like come out of like, wait a second, like I need you in my life. And uh, they'll get to the place where they want to beg you to stay. Now, with begging you to stay, you have to be able to understand a couple things. First and foremost, when a narcissist is begging you to stay, it's typically not because they miss you. And it's typically not because they actually care about you. Oftentimes, what's actually going on there is I want you to stay because if you leave, it's going to negatively affect my image to other people, to friends, to family, to society. That's it. Narcissist cares more about their image than they do about you leaving, than they do about you being honest with the world and exposing them. They're like, I care more about my image than anything else. So I have to be careful that you don't leave me. If you leave me, then I'm going to look like a bad person. Then I'm going to look like the bad guy. Did you have this happen in your relationship where it's like begging you not to leave, begging you not to give up on them, begging you not to walk away? It's amazing how many times a narcissist will beg you not to do something even though they've done that same thing to you 3,000 times beforehand. I'm speaking from personal experience. Like I would tell Kayla not to leave. I would beg her not to leave, not to give up on me when I'd given up on her years before. No interactions that I cared about, no love, no connection, no emotional support, no empathy anywhere there. Like I'd given up. There wasn't this aspect of actually trying in the relationship. I'd just given up. But then when she finally sees that and is like, hey, you haven't invested in me for years, so I'm going to walk away. Then I'm like, how could you do that to me? How could you leave me? How could you do this in my time of need? How could you do this when I'm trying, when I'm trying to work on myself, when I'm trying to change and you're going to walk out the door? This is the piece that narcissists want to play so they feel better about themselves, even though they've done the same thing to you time and time and time again. Did you have that happen? If so, if you had any of these happen, leave a note down below so people understand they're not alone. Because what happens is they're going to beg you to stay and then you're going to leave and they're going to start to fabricate a story, a story that doesn't put them as being the catalyst for you leaving. You left because you were angry. You left because you were toxic. You left because you were the abuser, but not because it had anything to do with them. There was a piece of me that wanted my wife to leave so that I wouldn't be the bad guy, so that my image wouldn't look tainted because she walked away from me. Regardless of how toxic I was, I wanted her to walk away from me so I didn't actually feel bad. This is the place you understand when the narcissist is throwing out hints of like, we should just get a divorce. Like, if you don't like this, then you should just leave. There's a piece there that a lot of narcissists are actually letting you know that they don't want to be in their relationship and they want you to leave. This is where they start to tell on themselves of like, I want you to leave. But they're saying it in subtle, subtle hints. The thing is, the narcissist wants you to leave and you to look like the bad guy so that he can look like the good person, the, the great dad, the person who is faithful, that stayed there, all those things because it's all about image and how it makes him look in the moment. Now, you're going to see a pivot sometimes that happens at the very, very end. Literally, you're getting ready to walk out the door of there being this future faking, of these promises, and of there being like change at the very end of the relationship, even like the last week, where all of a sudden they're planning a trip. They're saying, hey, we're going to go to Disney together. Hey, we're going to go do this together. We're going to go on this camping trip we've always talked about. Like, they're going to fabricate the stuff of like, this is what we're doing to try to be able to lock you in, to try to be able to hold you back. They're going to say like, oh, like you wanted me to get in therapy. I, I booked therapy. Did, did you see? I booked therapy because they want to pat on the back for actually doing the things that they've known about for a long period of time, but they chose not to because they didn't need to. You were stuck. But now that you're actually leaving, manipulation has to be able to change. 
This is the part that you have to be able to realize really, really clear is at the end of the relationship, when a narcissist starts doing everything that you always wanted, it's not because they had an epiphany and it's not because you sat them down and you told them every single thing in that moment. They start doing all the things you always wanted because they always knew. They always knew. He knew what you wanted and that's why he held it back from you. Because when holding it back from you, it kept you coming after him. At the end of the relationship, you stopped coming after him. So he's like, okay, now I need to actually do something. I need to change this one piece so that you see I'm doing what you want. It's not because they finally get it. It's because they've always got it. And they've chose not to actually apply it or have it make a difference in their lives because they don't actually care about you. Again, this is not just me speaking randomly. This is me speaking from experience. When you see a narcissist change at the very end of the relationship, you need to understand that it's a manipulation tactic and they knew the entire time. And to continue moving forward with your healing, to continue moving forward, going no contact, separating, divorcing, whatever it might be, is your best option. Because you need to get to the place where the relationship is off the table so you actually see, is there any remorse? Is there any change that's actually true that's not dependent on the result of getting you back? If you guys like what you see here and you want to work on yourself and you want to start growing in that healing process, would love to interact with you. would love to talk to you. Go to rawmotivations.com. Click on the one-on-ones. would love to interact with you and help you move forward in building a process forward to help you heal, help you exit, help you take back your power in your mind so that person no longer takes free real estate of you and what's going on. If you haven't already, like or subscribe. Got more content coming about narcissism and also your healing journey.